The ME3 Tweaks team has been working hard to improve the tools of ME3 Explorer, so you can more easily create mods for the Mass Effect trilogy. Here are some of the highlights of our work for ME3 Explorer 4. With the new Mount Editor tool, you can create mount files for both Mass Effect 3 and Mass Effect 2. For Mass Effect 2, you used to have to hex edit this, but since we've reverse engineered the file format, it's much easier now. In our new TLK Manager, you can see it now supports all three games in the same interface. All the TLKs listed here will be persisted across sessions. You can hit Auto Find TLKs to automatically find all TLKs in the game directory. And if you hit Yes, you can immediately reload them. If, for example, you're not an English speaker, you can change these to something like Spanish, and then hit Apply Changes, and it'll reload them all in that language. They're also sorted by map priority, so you don't need to worry about which string is where. For Mass Effect 1, you can also directly edit TLKs by going into the Export Import Edit window. You can just go here, and you can type in dot 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 for example. You can press save, and commit, and then save. And now the file has changed. Package Editor WPF has received a ton of changes, many of which you won't see, but will fix a lot of bugs in the back end. For example, in the Options menu, you can now turn on Object Indexes if not zero, which will show you Object Indexes if it's not zero. So for example, the Shadow Map texture here is now 1819. And for example, if you want to make this a little bit easier to read, you can go to the Options menu, Interpreter, and turn off Advanced Mode, which will condense the interface a little bit. You can also turn off the colors if you really don't like those, but personally, I find both of these make it much easier. Advanced Mode I'll turn off occasionally if I'm in an interface that doesn't have a ton of space for me to use. Performance is greatly improved from the previous versions because now the tree view is now virtualized. There's also new tools built into Package Editor. You can now preview textures directly. Although I wouldn't recommend doing this too much because this doesn't appear to be fully stable yet. Another new feature is called Multi-Drop Relinking. What this does is it allows you to drag and drop multiple items and then do a relink at the end rather than just when the drop has performed. The way this works is that you'll drop in from a single package file into your destination package file multiple things. So for example, Skeletal Mesh Actor 1, 2, 3 are all linked together. And then another item, Skeletal Mesh 4, 5, 6 are also all linked together. And they're all based on a single Skeletal Mesh asset based in another package somewhere up higher in the tree. What you can do is you can drag all of those in and then perform a relink operation from the tools menu and these all will be linked up at the same time rather than only as you drop them in. Used properly, this can save you a ton of time, but it's a very experimental and advanced feature. Sequence Editor WPF is a complete rewrite of the original Sequence Editor. What it does is it allows you to much easier view graphs. For example, this is one as how it would look in the old version of the tool. Now, if we go up to Layout and do Rerun Auto Layout, this is unbelievably easier to read. And this applies to just about all sequences. It isn't perfect, but it is thousands, thousands of times easier than it used to be. Unbelievably better. It also supports Kismet Logger Parsing, which allows you to view in a graphical setting how Kismet executed and in what order things were run. I'll have a separate video on how to use this linked in the description. Pathfinding Editor has also been completely rewritten. We're going to take a first look at an art asset. We're going to turn on Actor View, and we're going to open up some Static Mesh Collections. As you can see here, there's a lot of stuff in this area, but we don't really know what it's centered around. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up an overlay file, a new feature in this version. Since this map is based around Pro Ear 400, we're going to open up that. We're going to turn these static mesh collection actors on again. And we can see now that it's kind of aligned along this upside down U shape. This allows us to much easier get a sense of scale and direction when we're moving objects around on the map. Now we're going to load up the pathing file and we're going to notice that the interface is much more advanced. There's an XYZ editor which allows us to directly edit values like that without having to drill into the properties. We can create and delete reach specs immediately just by clicking these trash icons are scrolling down here and entering the values. When we click on an item on the left here, it scrolls directly into view. So you always can find exactly the node that you clicked on. If, for example, I wanted to create a new connection to another node. So, for example, if I wanted to make a connection from this node down to here, I'll just hold shift, click it, and it'll automatically populate this value. 
I can change the reach spec type, the size, typically these will be the defaults. I'll just hit create, and it'll create me a new one. And so, for example, if I want to create one to here, for example, I hit create. If I wanted to create one to here, I could do create. So I can quickly establish a pathfinding chain. And then when I'm done, I can just hit fix and validate, and it'll recalculate all of these for me.